June 22nd, 2023 edition of the Northampton Conservation Commission. And I'll forego our statement and all that, as we already all know. It. Um, on the agenda tonight is basically just one hearing. Um, request for determination of app applicability I come up with a better word to determine if a septic system installation uh, comes under our jurisdiction. And this is on Old Wilson Road. The uh, second hearing is uh, for a uh, sewer realignment on uh, along the Mill River. And that has been. Uh, Withdrawn, I believe, or, or is it postponed? Uh, that's been withdrawn by the applicant, so no action or discussion on that will be ne necessary. Okay. In that case, we'll jump right into a determination of applicability to, to determine if septic system installation and creation of a lawn within a buffer zone to wetlands subject to the Wetlands Protection Act for the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance, and this is for John Ewing at uh, 253 Old Wilson Road. And I see John's here, so I'm Yep, hello. Hello. Um, what, do you, what do you want to hear from me? Just, just a, a kind of an overview of the project. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's currently a, uh, a vacant lot and um, my son's building a, a small Cape house. Uh, it's a 26 by 36, uh, three bedroom Cape. Um, and uh, I don't know if, do you, have you folks all seen the plan or have a copy of the plan? Uh, I can refer to it. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So the house, uh, the right rear corner of the house will be very close to the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, septic is in the front right of the lot. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a three acre lot, but the, uh, you know, due to the wetland line, it's, it's kind of a small envelope there. So um, uh, Tim McGinnis designed the uh, septic system. And uh, so it's going to the front right of the house, as you can see. And um, so the uh, as far as the uh, breakout, there's breakout fill, basically topsoil that has to kind of slope down into maybe, uh, I think it's about 20 feet into the buffer zone um, and probably about 20, 22, 23 feet deep. Um, you know, from Wilson Road towards the back, um, next to the uh, leach field. Um, and then the other that we're looking to do is, uh, and on the back there is the lawn, so which would go about straight into the 100 foot buffer zone, about 20 feet, and then go diagonally um, west, um, and to kind of create a square uh, backyard, um, which does, you know, is it so it's a triangle of about, um, I forget how many square feet it was uh, uh, to, for a future. Oh, so yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. There's no garage currently, it's going to be a future garage, um, a gravel driveway unpaved drive um, and uh, yeah, that's about the gist of it. The uh, Tim was trying to, um, you know, maneuver the septic system in each field to um, avoid going into the buffer zone, but he said that um, you know, just because it's kind of tight that he, he kind of couldn't do that. 
Um, it is an Elgin system. I don't know, I don't know if you're uh, probably familiar with that. Um, and uh, yeah, so the uh, it's he calls it breakout fill. So it, it's basically, um, you know, fine uh, sand, um, which is uh, uh, for the Elgin system, and then topsoil on top of that. And it would sl uh, slope down into the buffer zone. Not familiar with the Elgin system. Mm -hmm. I am familiar with raised. Mm -hmm. yes. um, After the, it, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not a septic so, engineer, but just I know what he explained to me. It basically, it's to to um, it. You don't have to have it uh, built up. Uh, as high as uh, a conventional system. Um, he says he's been installing them for uh, 15, 15 plus years and he's had good luck with them and they work well. And, um, so it allows you to not have to, you know, have, have that big mound in, in front and bring in a bunch of fill. John, could you just talk a little bit about the, the post installation um, area of the site that's proposed to be located within the buffer zone? Will this be revegetated and graded back to uh, existing grades? Yeah, yeah, it won't. It, you know, so it's it's clearly marked now. We had eaten uh, flag it. Um, so after installation, you know, they would just avoid. Um, that you know, going over the hundred foot buffer line, and and uh, either just you know let it grow back up to you know the native plants, or um, plant some other vegetation if if uh, that's desirable. <clears throat> but um, yeah, they wouldn't they wouldn't mow it. They would probably mow right up to the line there, the hundred foot line. Questions or comments from commissioners? This may be a self-evident question, but what happens with the future lawn that almost 700 square feet? Mm -hmm. What? The 600, um, 696 square feet, does that mm -hmm. just grow up and has some native vegetation in it? Um, well, yeah, I mean, if they make it a lawn, I guess they would just maintain it, mow it. Um, okay. they wouldn't be using any pesticides. My son is pretty, uh, against that. And he's teaching his father who was old school to be the same way. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be, uh, they don't have kids yet, but the kids would be playing out there, so he wouldn't put any okay. nasty chemicals or anything like that yeah. out there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. And John, typically one of the commission's concerns um, with a residential development so close to a wetland area is that over time the, the yard and associated residential uses sort of creep closer and closer to the wetland. So Mm -hmm. Have you, I mean, it wasn't included in the plans or the application, but do you have any thoughts about how that would be prevented in this case? Um, well, um, other than promising they won't, I, you know, I, um, um, you know, as you know, in the, uh, the other lots that we did in the back, back of this uh we put boulders every five feet i think it was or two foot boulders or whatever uh to kind of delineate that line and you know we could do something like that to, you know you know so they, they would know where it is and where they can't go in the future yeah. 
I mean, this application seemed pretty clearly split into two separate activities that the, uh, the septic system is a temporary disturbance and that can be restored to a, you know, mm -hmm. natural vegetation as much as it's natural now and when it's uh, was previously used as a driving range um mm -hmm. but the but the lawn area is a permanent thing that will be there um mm -hmm. you know on going forward so mm -hmm. they, they're looked at a little bit differently I and mean, the septic system definitely mm -hmm. seems like it couldn't be located elsewhere on the site due to the location of the perk test uh, mm -hmm. so just mm -hmm. something for the commission to consider yeah 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 is is just, a, yeah. i was just going to say as a as the newbie on the commission <laughs> um is that pretty common to uh, ask for uh, some kind of an obstacle like a boulder to be placed uh, to prevent uh, a cre uh, lawn creep, if you want to call it that. So that's fairly standard. Yeah, and the commission's done various things depending on the location of a, a site and what's proposed. So boulders demarcating a no-mow area beyond uh, signage in some instances if, if it's something a little bit more commercial or industrial um, but it, it depends on the site and something mm -hmm. to mark the edge of that since it will be a residential lawn might make sense in this case if the mm -hmm. if the commission agrees that the lawn area would not impact the buffer so what, what is the lawn area now is that part of the sort of overgrown fairway um yeah it, it, up until uh, well, 15 or 18 years ago, it was a, a driving range, golf driving oh, okay. range. It, it had yeah. been mowed, you know, mowed in, um, like fairways, you know, uh, fairway length. Um, but it was that way for 50 years, actually, um, from the late sixties up until, uh, 2005. Um, so yeah, whatever, just natural, natural vegetation growth there. And, and took over. Uh, uh, John, there's there are no um, trees of any good size being removed from. No, the there's house some or the small, lawn, small pine trees. Uh, I think in the the proposed area for the for the lawn, there's like two or three pine trees, maybe six inches in width. Um, which I personally would like to see go anyway because they're kind of a danger to um any structures around during storms and so forth uh they're usually the first to break apart and fall down yeah. um they'll be 75 feet 75 feet in height in about 20 years <laughs> um oh, i'm sorry you're breaking yet. up you're breaking I, up on, on my end here can, can, can you hear me now uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, you know, those trees are going to be seventy-five feet tall in about twenty years, and yeah, right. it, it, yeah. they just become an increasing hazard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't have any concerns about the septic. I, you know, I think the the area um, inside the hundred foot buffer, if you just seeded it with some sort of um, native seed mix, just so that. Mm -hmm. We get more native plants and less um, <laughs> native weeds growing in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and taking over the space. Um, and, and you know, given given the history of the lawn space, I, I don't know about the other um, members, but I'm I'm not too concerned about it. I, I think it's uh, um, appropriate. Mm -hmm. And it's not detailed in the application, but there are actually some areas of pavement and other disturbance within within the buffer zone and probably within the wetland itself. Um, so, you know, if yeah. the commission got to the level of a notice of intent where something more intensive was proposed, there certainly are areas that would qualify as being previously degraded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I would like the, the you know, any approval have demarcated with boulders or something. My guess is once you start excavating for the foundation, you'll find lots of boulders. Um, yeah, might be yeah. the easiest thing to do to demarcate where the the no mow zone begins. Right. right. Yeah. 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 There's the re the remains of a um, former uh, T line. You know where they uh, where they hit hit from uh, it was asphalt, um, and it oh. goes across. It goes across the um, uh, well, right where the back of the house, actually, right where the house is. 
and then on the eastern side it does extend in into the um, buffer zone a little bit and um, so uh, I, I think when we talk about that Sarah about we, we would take that out of there and is that a, a good thing to get rid of the asphalt? Yeah I mean that would be an exempt activity so if you want to pull up that asphalt and just return it to um, a vegetated mm -hmm. area that's not something that would require a permit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Future, the only tea time will be in the kitchen. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No more golf around there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any uh, questions or comments from the public? Hands going up. Um, there is no more information. I'll entertain a motion to close the meeting. Not, not hearing. Uh, no, it's an RDA, so you, you can move okay. right to the decision. Everybody jump at once. Second. <laughs> that was a motion. Motion. Or a second. A second. Okay. All those in favor? But what what was the what are we moving? What was the motion? <laughs> to close the Oh, we, we don't need to, it's not, since oh. it's an RDA, we don't need a formal okay. motion to close. Okay. All right. All right, so um, then we're going to have to come up with our, uh, I assume we are heading towards a negative determination. And I don't see, uh, I only have Sarah's staff report. I don't know what you have on. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with the negative determination, but as I mentioned, any any disturbed areas within the uh, hundred foot buffer to be replanted with a native seed mix, just so um, keep out invasive to the extent possible, and then to demarcate the uh, the extent of the lawn so the no mow zone is very clear. Okay, I agree with that. Um, we also have to, I think Sarah had to say something about the. Wetland delineation. Oh was, yeah. Um so back in 2018. So yeah, so this is the commission confirmed the wetland boundary back in 2019. Um and then due to permit tolling during the state of emergency, that's still valid. Um just due to oh, the okay. age of when that was originally delineated, you know, five years ago at this point. I wouldn't recommend that the commission reconfirm it. Um it has no bearing on the actual work itself, but you know, just doesn't extend that for another three years. Okay. That is that it? Any more additions? Uh, not the standard uh, conditions. The demarcation of the future lawn and the uh, natural seed and the buffer zone. I'll entertain a Motion to issue a negative determination of those conditions. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? All right, so roll call needed. Uh, David? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Mason? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you. Alex John. That, that sounds good. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, and have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. And um, Mason, we do have a certificate of compliance request on the agenda, but since Elizabeth is here to talk about the CR amendment that was necessary to put under other business, it, it makes sense to move to that one at this point. Sure. Elizabeth, you're on. Thank you. Hello, everyone. 
Hey, welcome Ethan, back. Randy. Hi, Jen. I didn't know you're on the commission. It's excellent. <laughs> Paul, David, nice to meet you. I was on the, I think I stepped off in 2019 or 20. Um, I am here to talk about, so uh, last October, Gary Warner donated a conservation restriction to the Conservation Commission on his, on 35 acres of his land on North Farms Road. Um, it was a charitable gift. So the IRS uh, is uh, part of this transaction. The IRS, there's a paragraph in that, whatever, 20 page long document that's called extinguishment. Um, and the IRS has come up with language that they wanna see in uh, CRs, which basically says if the CR, which is a perpetual document, but if it's ever terminated by judicial action, then um, the proceeds would go to the ComCom and the landowner in a proportion that's uh, the same as it was the day the CR was recorded. So in other words, the proportion doesn't change over time if the landowner makes some improvements to their land and the value of their land goes up, but the CR stays low. Right now, there's a certain proportion as determined by the appraisal and the IRS just wants to make sure the Conservation Commission would get the same amount of money if the very tiny risk of an extinguishment ever occurred. That's all we're amending is that one paragraph. I need your approval on it because you're the grantee. Um, you're accepting this amendment. The landowner is granting you this amendment. And then we need your signatures on it. Any questions? <laughs> um, we also need to take it to city council, um, which we're going to do on July 13th. So Sarah, did you want to run through the signature process? You're going to have it at sure. your Sure. Yeah. So um, I outlined it a little bit in my staff report, but you know, every, every amendment to a conservation restriction has to be approved and signed by the Conservation Commission as well as the City Council. Uh, City Council will next be meeting in July, so I'll, I'll draft an order and take this to them. Um, the, so then we'll collect all the signatures. EEA has already approved this. You know, they're, they knew that this was coming. They're doing others across the state um, to update this language. So we we'll just collect the signatures, send it in, and get this on the books to meet that 90-day deadline so do we, do we need a vote? vote sorry randy question yeah i was gonna ask do we do we need a vote and then uh is there any delay in the signatures or will that be on your desk like tomorrow and we can start coming in to sign it so yes so uh once it gets voted on this can be signed immediately by the conscom okay so i i can same process as the last one i can print it out and leave it there for everybody to sign um, and Elizabeth doesn't specifically deal with um, with this one as I you know as we know this isn't a substantive amendment. But do you know what the background to the the shift in this language at the IRS level is? Yes, it has to do with an abuse um, from landowners in a whole other part of the country. Um, in this extinguisher pack paragraph, they would say um, basically that the landowner got paid for. Um, sig uh, subsequent improvements was the phrase as so like for example Gary put a barn on his property um and making the value of the land go up and he would his he would want his proportion to be reflected if there was ever an extinguishment um our language is always said shall remain constant but the IRS had came out with very specific language as if and anything with a national program there are abuses um, in other parts of the country that don't really exist here in Massachusetts, but we have to follow, because it's the IRS, we have to follow the protocol um, and and get in line. So it, nothing in Massachusetts. I, I would imagine in, in some states, it, it might be fairly easy to extinguish a CR, where in Massachusetts, yep. that's near impossible. Exactly. Right, <laughs> impossible. <laughs> I tried to read the IRS regulations 2023-30, and I have to admit, I didn't understand anything. 
Yeah. So I appreciate I appreciate your your explanation, Elizabeth. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I don't I didn't really understand wetlands. <laughs> so it just it's something okay. you do it every day. Like I read that I read that language every day. So it's just like second nature, but yeah. Just listening to you all talk, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's certain types of legalese that some people are better at than others. But this financial it's stuff is definitely not my strong suit either. <laughs> so we need a motion? Correct. Uh, so it would be, uh, be a move to um, approve the, um, the amendment. The amendment to the CR. So move. I would so move. Okay, second. All in favor? All second. Jen's a roll call vote. David? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Mason? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you so much. And um, as I mentioned, we're going to the city council on the 13th. So if we could get it all signed up and then say to the council that the CONCOM has approved. That would be excellent. Great. Because it has to go to EEA up by the 14th. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 All right. And the last item from me is this request for a certificate of compliance at 142 Riverbank Road. Um, so this happily is not one that's you know 30 or 35 years old with some of the more recent ones we've been dealing with. Um, the commission issued an order of conditions in 2020 for construction of a dock and a stairs um, dock within land under water, stairs on bank, and then a small deck within the riverfront area. Um, in addition to standard conditions, the order required that the applicant evaluate the proposed bank mitigation prior to coming back to ask for a certificate. I went out and did a site visit. Everything looks like it's going along swimmingly. Um, in dock is exactly as it was proposed. Stairs are no wider than they were proposed to be, which which was refreshing. Sometimes they have a tendency to be installed a little bit wider than they were proposed. Um, bank looks great. Plantings look good. So I, I have no issues with this one. So we'll recommend a full certificate. Great. Okay, I'll need a motion to approve the certificate of compliance. Roger. No move. I move that we approve the request for the certificate certificate of compliance. Move and that was a second. Um, David and Paul. So roll call. David. Yes. Uh, Randy. Yes. Jen. Yes. Paul. Yes. And Mason. Yes. All right. Unanimous.